Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Moving Mountains for You. This is your host, Ice Left Zeladon. I go by Sachi Ice Queen on a lot of social media. Today, we're going to talk about relationships. Um, every single one of these episodes is brought to you by Learning Idiom and Authors Are Us. Uh, Authors Are Us is the first bilingual publishing company here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we publish English, Spanish, bilingual, and audiobooks. And so if you're interested in becoming an author and sharing your story, definitely let us know. We always do master classes um, in order for you guys to get your story out there. So today, uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about relationships. So shout out to all the Arkansas singles. Um, we have a Facebook group that has grown really, really quickly. And so we're trying to put out more content for that audience because it's the one that's growing the most and so um me and my co-host Claudia Fountain did a episode um not too long ago about relationships and so we definitely wanted to get the male perspective and so we brought on the monarch of fire um so yeah go ahead and reintroduce yourself and um tell us a little bit about uh what you think about relationships and love and love well, I'm the monarch, and I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Um, this is going to be a rather interesting discussion today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a few questions that we're going to be referencing. Um, when the first one, um, I think it's pretty common for women to not really know what men want. You know, they say that men don't know what women want. I think it's the same way. And so one of the questions that I wanted to definitely address um, is uh, what causes you to want to stay in a relationship? It's a bit of a two-sided question because there's a lot of reasons to want to be in a relationship with someone. It really depends on the person. Some people have abandonment issues. Some people just love to be seen with someone. Um, what causes me to stay in a relationship is the constant love and nurturing between one, one another. You have that safety with each other and you know that you don't want to have it with anyone else or lose what you already have. I think that's a really good point because uh, a lot of women and men have abandonment issues. And so I know me personally, my dad, um, he left when I was around 11 or 12. So I think I do definitely struggle with uh, wanting to self-sabotage is what I've been told. <laughs> so um, definitely, I think it's a work in progress. I think in any relationship, you can learn things um, if you choose to. And so uh, for women, I think the main thing for women that I hear the most is security. They always want to feel secure. They always want to feel safe, um, you know, have that, you know, strong, quote unquote, man to to lean on, not only just, you know, um, emotionally, but also, you know, in the sense of having someone to rely on. I think that's really important for most women, especially like single women, they need someone reliable. <laughs> So um, I think that's definitely something that most women that I've heard always want that in a relationship. So we definitely think, uh, I mean, I, it's, uh, I think cheating is a very, very important topic. We definitely wanted to cover um, because it happens so often. <laughs> uh, so the question is, uh, why do men cheat? And how should they respond when they when they've been cheated on? Um, again, that's that's a bit of a two sided question. Um, I really think the biggest factor that causes a man to cheat is when he feels useless. Whenever he hits that state of mind where he doesn't feel wanted by a his woman or his partner, so to speak. But just to be fair, this is 2023. So we got to kind of hit a di different kind of demographic nowadays. 
I prefer to use the term partner, not to be offensive. Um, but when a man feels that sense of not wanted or not loved, it infringes on our mentality on everything. And I'm guilty of it, just as every man is. We've all been guilty of some form of cheating, whether it be actively, physically acting on it, or even just looking at a woman when she walks by. Um, in my opinion, there are several ways to cheat, but everybody only ever focuses on the physicality rather than the visual and the emotional, because you can emotionally cheat or mentally cheat on someone by thinking of being with someone else. And I really think that's the biggest reason a man goes to cheat is he, he feels unwanted and how we re respond to someone cheating on us is what makes us want to cheat in the first place because we're made to feel 10 inches tall and then unwanted and then we have someone cheat on us before we've ever even done anything and then that kind of inhibits a bit of vengeance kind of revenge kind of attitude from the man side and i think that's when the man messes up and does something he shouldn't so you're saying that um some men cheat because their significant others have cheated in some way in their eyes. Yes, but I mean, it's like I said, it's a two-sided question because women are the same way. As human beings, we were inhibited to more or less believe what is physically shown in front of us rather than word of mouth. Um. I believe that it's the same way for both men and women because even though you may talk about it and not act on it, but then your significant other talks on it and then actually does it, you know, that's where, you know, as a man myself, I've had it happen to me and it's just, mind-boggling because of mentally what it does to you because you know you haven't done anything remotely cheating like and then the person that you're supposed to love and trust the most out of everybody goes behind you and then that's where the relationship in my opinion starts to get rocky because now you both are on your guard and you don't trust one another. And then therein lies a lot of complications. Because then once the trust is gone, there is no relationship, at least in my professional opinion. Because you then have no foundation to set your relationship on. But nonetheless, I've seen people come out of those situations because it does happen whenever you truly love somebody. But at the same time, you have to be smart enough to know, should I stay with this person or should I leave this person? You have to make that educated guess. I think it also boils down to if it becomes a habit. I think some men and some women, because, you know, women cheat just as just as often as men do. Um, just like we said earlier, there's so many different ways to cheat, whether you're texting someone else when you should be not entertaining that relationship or that conversation, whether it be not giving your man or your woman or your significant other the appropriate time, you know, date nights are really, really important. I've always heard it from every single successful marriage is that the number one thing that helped them the most is that they always made time for each other. And so I think we live in a world where they glorify being busy. They glorify, you know, being quote unquote successful. And so you always constantly have to be busy to even 
um, appear to be successful. And I think when you stop and take that moment to, you know, nurture your relationship, I think it definitely helps. And so I'm glad that we definitely covered the emotional side of cheating because it's just, in my opinion, and I've heard this from other women, for women, it's worse. For women, I feel like when they emotionally cheat, I feel like it's a lot worse than physically doing the action because you're giving that person a piece of your mind that you're not giving to your significant other. You're giving them a piece of your heart in in a sense because you're trusting that person instead of trusting the person that you claim to love. And so for me personally, I feel like that stings a little bit more than a physical act that was just done probably because you were drunk or not even just to do that. And so I think it, in my eyes and in, in my opinion, I think that's a lot worse. So um, the next question is, what is the most important quality in someone you want to spend your life with? I really think that I'm gonna go back to the trust that you share with that person, I, I believe is the most important quality. I mean, because let's, let's just be honest, you can be a total piece of crap, but still be a good spouse to your significant other. You could be the most foul looking person on the face of the earth, but still have some level of connectivity with the person you decided to be with. Um, me personally, I, I believe it's the trust. The trust is what builds everything. If you've got no trust, you've got nothing because then how are you supposed to continue a lifelong relationship with this person? If you can't trust one another, my grandparents have been married for almost 70 years It'll be 70 years in September. No, November. I do I do apologize. November. And they bicker and argue like cats and dogs in the rain. But they trust one another and they trust in each other. So you can trust someone, but to trust in someone is a whole different level. Because you can trust someone just because you've known them for whatever 20 or 30 whatever years but to put your trust in someone means you have fully given yourself to that person and that's where i think the game changes because you're no longer in the honeymoon or lover bird stages anymore once you have fully given yourself to each other you tend to hold each other more accountable than what you did before. So like I, like I said, I believe that trust builds everything because it sets the way for everything to get started. Yeah, I think that's um, very good to point out. Um, I think you can have love in a relationship, but if you don't trust the person, then it's kind of hard to have a relationship because how can you trust what they're saying? How can you trust that they, when they say that they love you? Like, I mean, to me, I think that's very, very important. Um, well, it goes back to you, you know, saying you give a piece of your heart to this person. You, the only way you truly know if you can trust this person, if you can see their actions reflect on what they say. Yeah, I think it's very, very true. Um, just a disclosure. Um, I'm not a relationship coach and, uh, he isn't either, but we've just, we're just two people that have learned from our past relationships. And, you know, I truly believe that if you don't heal from your past relationships, then you're just going to have a hard time with your next relationship. So I definitely want to, you know, make sure I tell people that is that if you just broke up or you just got a divorce or you just left you know, your significant other for whatever reason, make sure you take the time to be with yourself and to heal before you enter another relationship because everything that you dealt with in the past relationship, if you don't deal with it, you're going to deal with it again. Unless you, you know, stop and 
take in consideration and really look at yourself because in a relationship it's two it's not all one person's fault and so I think it's very important that you um, focus on what you can do better for you to be a better like partner for that for your, your next relationship so to close out um we definitely wanted to get a little more personal and ask him specifically who taught him about women and um you know how to treat a woman and all of that so definitely wanted to give you time to share a little bit about you and your life um honestly i i grew up primarily with women don't get me wrong i still had my dad and my stepdad and my brothers and other men in my life but when it comes to this um the women in my life are really who taught me how to treat a woman so you know who better than a woman themselves who's been through a lot um i would honestly have to say my stepmom marty my mother teresa and my grandmother Faye. they have been the most influential women in my life even to this day um they taught me how to not just be sweet but how to stand firm so my mother and my stepdad are the ones who pray primarily and predominantly raised me don't get me wrong my dad was there it, he just he's a truck driver so he wasn't he wasn't there all the time and so i'm not saying that i couldn't depend on him but for him to physically be there you know it just wasn't always there but i see how he would interact with with marty and how my mother and my stepdad would interact um watching my grandparents interact and i really think those three women are who are responsible for the knowledge that i have today and who i take the time and thank all the time for what they taught me I think that's really good. I think it's good for you, for any, you know, boy and young man to have women around them that, you know, sisters, you know, moms, stepmoms, even aunts, you know, that teach you how to not only treat a woman, but, you know, to show them what it's like to be a woman, even if they'll never be able to fully understand, they'll have a glimpse of what it's like. And so I think they'll have a little bit more knowledge as to how to deal with a woman. <laughs> Because uh, I know there's some days that it's uh, definitely challenging. Um, I didn't have that growing up. I didn't. My my two oldest brothers are way older than me, and so if I could, you know, think of someone that taught me about men, it would probably be um, one of my uncles, and not even that very much because I didn't really spend much time with him, but. I just, um, you know, having the idea of it, you know, you read books and you, you know, you listen to stories, you look at marriages growing up, you know, you look at everything. So if you don't have, you know, the opposite sex close to you, like say you just have brothers or you just have sisters, look at the people around you in your community. Look how the, you know, the wife interacts with the husband, you know, look at how they interact with each other. Cause that's how I learned you know, the little bit that I do know, I learned because I would watch other people and other couples and I would watch how they interact with each other in public. Of course, I didn't see in, in private other than like my friends, families, but um, so definitely get those people around you that you can look up to and, you know, those relationships that you see that are truly healthy, that are not just, you know, fronting that they're quote unquote happy or whatever. Um, definitely like look for, you know, people who have, um, you know, God in, in, the, in their relationship. Cause I think that's really important. I think if you don't include God in your relationship and if you don't pray for your significant other, it's very hard to deal with, you know, trying to put them first or trying to put your needs second, or think of both of your needs, not just your needs. And I think the easiest way to do that is to pray and ask God to show you how to better how to be better for them because nobody knows them better than God. And so, yeah. Any last words that you want to say? Uh, we're going to close this video out. Uh, this 
this verse kind of hits a little bit to what we've been talking about. Um, it's going to be in Nahum 1-7. In the, it's in the King James Version of the Bible. And it's Nahum 1-7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth that them that trust in him. So what I'm grasping from that is that the Lord, that God is good to us. He's always been good to us. But when we don't put our trust in him, then what do we have? Touches with these relationships. If you can't put your trust in someone by some point, then that may not be the right person for you. Because once the trust is lost, the relationship is bound to crumble. Now, like like we both have said, we're we're not relationship coaches, but we do implement God in our lives and let him take control and let, we let him take the reins of the horse. We're going on a long ride, all of us are. And God's the one controlling the horse. We're sitting behind him. And it's our job to latch onto his back and trust that he'll make the best decision. Just as we should all do in our relationships, our marriages, always make the better decision. Don't let outside influences inhibit you from making the right decision. Because that tends to cause a lot of backlash. When you let someone else in your relationship, that's where the real problems start. You can't let someone influence who you want or who you want to be with or who you decide to love. You love who you love, just like the old saying goes. I didn't choose to love you. I found out that I loved you. You know, that's that's kind of how it goes. Um. But all of y'all really need to sit and think on that. You know, why should I bring someone else into my relationship who was never there even to begin with? And just because people hit up your Facebook or your TikTok or whatever have you, just because you're in a relationship, it just means that they were always there. They just chose not to be there whenever you were single and whenever you needed somebody. But the minute you get in a relationship with someone, then, you know, bing, 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 your phone keeps going off. <laughs> That's not true. It really is true. It really, really is true. Once people find out that you're in a relationship, all of a sudden everyone wants to contact you. Some, <laughs> some people do it because they're happy to see you're happy. But there are others who are a little bit more vindictive than others. And so don't don't fall to that pressure and don't don't let the devil in, so to speak, because that's that's where cheating and other lustfulness and other bad mentalities come at, because now you have allowed others that don't need to be in your relationship in there. And then they're going to do what they do best. They're going to wreck it. And there's no stopping it at that point. You can't let others in that don't need to be there. A relationship is you and the other person, not you and the other person's family or best friend or even their dog. You know, it, it needs to be you and the other person. And if you don't make that a focusing point, then you're you're bound to have more problems. So you need to trust in God as equally as you should trust in the person you decided to be with. Yeah, so make sure that you guys are picky. I always tell everyone, be picky because, you know, I've always been told that if you don't pray specifically, how are you going to know that it's God? Like, how are you going to know that God specifically chose that person for you if you weren't very detail oriented when you, you know, wanted that person? So don't, be, but don't be too picky. Like, I mean, have standards for yourself, but don't, don't overshoot the bar. 
don't make it to where it's impossible for you to find somebody because somebody could come along that may be completely opposite of what you're looking for, but they are the person you wanted the whole time. That is true. That is true. And then I I have also heard other people say that the best way for you to find your quote unquote true love, your soulmate, you know, whatever is when you yourself find yourself. So if you find yourself and you are like whole within yourself, you will attract the person that is for you because you're already complete within yourself. And then that person is just going to add to your happiness. It's going to add to you, you. And so I've been told that once you start, you know, manifesting who you are, you know, born to be, that person that was born to be with you will be attracted to you because you are finally in that moment in your life. Um, I, I agree completely. You 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 give off this like ray of energy, and certain people get in sync or in tune with that beam. And those are the ones that are truly meant for you to find, because that means that God has placed them there because you meet the same grounds as that other person. And at that point, you should be able to know, am I making the right decision or am I not? So ultimately, go to God, ask confirmation, you know, even if you don't have a list at all. At least go to God and ask God, is this person for me? Is this the person that you have for me? Even if you don't have a list, you don't have, you don't know what you want, ask God, he'll know and he'll let you know if you ask him. So, um, you know, this is Sachi Ice Queen, aka, you know, Ice Slut Celadon. I'm a realtor, publisher, and a podcaster, of course. And you're listening to Moving Mountains for You. We had uh, the moniker fired today as our guest and co-host. Uh, we are going to be interviewing Dr. Rob Kelly. We're super, super excited for that. So definitely stay tuned. Um, and so, yeah, be on the lookout for our next episode. We're, we're going to keep talking about relationships because we we noticed um, if it's not me and the moniker fired, then it'll be um, me and Claudia talking about relationships because we see the most need for it. And so we definitely will be covering that and be on the lookout for my next book as well. It's uh, it's called Transcending La Familia. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be a co, uh, a co-author. Uh, I'm going to be a co-author in it. And also, I know we have a lot of updates, but um, we have a devotional book that's coming up next year. And both me and the Monarch of Fire, as well as Claudia Fountain, we're all going to be part of this amazing you know, devotional book. So you're not going to want to miss out on it. It's not going to be published this year, but it's going to be published next year, but it's getting compiled this whole year. And so definitely be on the lookout for that. So I'm super, super excited for our uh, next episode. And I'm excited for each one of you guys to find the person that God has for you. Um, Just to let you know, I always pray for everyone that views my content and listens to me because um, there's a reason that God brought you to this video. There's a reason that God brought you to my channel. And I truly believe that. And so I hope that um, with the, with the, whatever you heard, I hope that you took something from this and whatever it was that you did take from this, I hope that you let that seed grow. And so um, thank you for watching and being part of our bilingual community and definitely uh, reach out to us if you have any questions or if you are interested in any of our services, um, Monica, the Monica Fire is also part of Authors Are Us. And so definitely um, wanted to let you guys know that he can also answer questions about that as well. And he's a, and he's a mechanic. Mm-hmm. So you guys are in Arkansas. Uh, let us no, know. Don't call me if you're in Australia or Jamaica. Hey, we have a big audience in um in Germany, ironically. So oh, let me come home. <laughs> yes, uh um he's he's German, so you can mm-hmm. say something in German. Mm, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna keep everybody guessing. Um, I don't know any German. I know like very little. My sister did, you know, uh, live in Germany for a little bit, but All right. All right, y'all. Well, hope you guys have an amazing, amazing rest of your month and 
rest of your summer and stay tuned for our next episode. So bye everyone.